Hi, you're going along really well. This is week number two. This is lecture number four. I'm going to talk a little bit about literary terms. And I brought all my books with me. So, in theater or any kind of creative writing, you start with the main two. You have figurative writing, and that's creative. You hide things in there, like Easter eggs for people to find. Um, nothing is clear. Things could have a double meaning. In literal meaning, those are facts, facts, facts. Nothing is hidden. It is exactly what you say. Hi, I'm happy you came to class. Fact. Period. That's literal. But if I say, these are my books, they're props. You know that. So you have to figure out what does she mean by that? Why would I use this huge thing? You have to figure out, oh, this is a symbol for all of the information, all of the kinds of writing techniques you can use. Figurative, literal. So we start with that. Now under figurative, we have symbolism. Most people understand that. One thing represents another thing. So in symbolism, maybe all of the lights on stage go red. That's going to symbolize, represent high emotion. Maybe anger, maybe blood, maybe war. So one thing represents another thing, symbolism. Then you also have metaphor, metaphor. One thing, uh, you have a comparison, but you, you don't say like or as. You have a comparison. Man, you are going along in this course so well, you are like, you are, not even like, you are a rock. That's a metaphor, because obviously you're not made of stone. You are a rock means that you're strong, you're steady, you keep going, you're dependable, you can be a foundation, metaphor. So symbolism, metaphor, and simile, simile. That's a comparison where you do say as or like. So you are strong as a rock. Simile. Just need that one word right in the middle, right in the middle there. Then you have different kinds of irony. Some of my favorites. So you have situational irony. In that, the situation is different than you expect. It's sort of a twist at the end. So I just got a call and I'm going to have a new job and I have an interview. So I dress really nice and I have my resume and my bag and I go to the interview and I go in the room and everyone is dressed like clowns. Opposite of what I expected. Right? So that would be situational irony. Dramatic irony is when you know something. You're sitting in that audience and you know something, but the actor, the character, doesn't. Best example of that, a horror movie. You know, when you know the murderer is in the basement, and it's always a blonde girl. Why? I don't know. But the blonde girl goes, hmm, I need to get something from the basement. So she goes, turns on the light. Oh, the lights don't work. Oh, oh well, I'm going to go down in the basement anyway. And the whole audience is sitting there going, no, no, don't go down to the basement. The murderer is in the basement. What happens? The blind girl goes down and <coughs> kill, kill, blood, blood, death. That would be dramatic irony. We know something the character doesn't know. And the last is verbal irony. So that's sarcasm. You know, gee, I'm so happy that all of literature has such a good reputation. All my 
students are so excited to learn about poetry and literary terms and all of these complicated things. I'm talking opposite to what I mean. I wish people were more interested in that. So those give you some places to start. One of my favorite for theater is dialect. And it's not dialogue, that's two people talking. In dialect, that's like an accent, <laughs> an accent. So in sign, it would be the way you sign maybe regionally. In voice, it would be, uh, oh, I feel so sick, I can't believe it. Well, if I had started class talking like that, you would make assumptions about where I'm from, my background, maybe my educational level, my ethnicity. Uh, so dialect, when you read on the page, and it doesn't look like it's well-written English, they spell things wrong and they dropped whole letters and things, the playwright might be trying to give you a taste of where the character's from, what their background is, what's their ethnicity, what's their educational level. So dialect is a very cool term, technique for theater. I'm going to leave it there, but if you go to the content area on my courses, you'll see I uploaded and posted analyzing vocabulary. So all of these terms I explain in both English and sign. And again, why would I do it in sign if a lot of the students are hearing? Well, theater is a 3D language, creative art. It's a 3D personal creative art. Sign language is a 3D language. Sometimes techniques that I explain about how you write in English actually work better in understanding what you will see 3D on stage. You can see a symbol. It doesn't have to be written. You can see a metaphor. You can see situational irony. That's a 3D thing. So that's why it's worth it to know it in both languages and both cultures. More as we go along. So enjoy the rest of your day, and I'll see you in week number three. Bye-bye.